Good afternoon, investor. Um, we are here to do a valuation pitch of KMD Brands and Premier Investment. Uh, the people who have researched this stuff is myself, Bailey. Uh, we've got Niall, we've got Connor, we've got Josh, and unfortunately, Cody couldn't be here today, so he makes his apologies. So get straight into it, who are your investment opportunities? We've got Premier Investments and KMD Brands. Going into it, we've got Michael Daly, is the Managing Director and Group CEO of KMD Brands, and they currently include Kathmandu, Oboes, and Rip Curl, and their current share price is 78 cents, which is important. Premier Investments, on the other hand, Solomon Liu is the Chairman and Non-Executive Director. John Bryce is the standing CEO and current CFO. He's standing for Richard Murray, who resigned effective September last month. And their brands are Pete Alexander, Just Jeans, Smeagol, JJ's, Jackie, Portman's, and Dotty. And they're sitting at $24.08. So their vision strategy are a bit different. KMD Brands, on one hand, focuses solely on wanting to be the leading family of global outdoor brands. And they consist on four pillars, building global brands, elevating digital, leveraging operational excellence, showcasing leadership. Premier, on the other hand, uh, they want to leverage their expertise and strong capital position to own and operate a selection of retail consumer products and wholesale business. They want to assess the growth opportunities, corporate restructure, financial strategy, and engaging with stakeholders. Value drivers for primary investment. So our most important value driver is a debt to equity ratio. A debt to equity ratio of 4% um, indicates PMB's short term assets are able to cover its short term liabilities, and the short term assets too are able to cover its long term liabilities. From this, um, we assume that it depicts a business's ability to expand efficiently um, and function in the future with a lot of financial security. Our second one is the stock volatility, a three year levy beta of 0 0.96 indicates that the uh, market price of the stock. Um, fluctuates um, very, very relatively to the business, um, uh, to the market price. Um, the assumption is that stock price security will enable the business to expand again, previously linked to the debt to equity ratio. The third one is the dividend yields. A stable dividend yield over the past 10 years, um, and its dividend yield has increased over the past 10 years. A consistent dividend yield projects to shareholders uh, the financial health of the business. It encourages existing shareholders to reinvest their dividend yields and encourages new investors um, to invest because of the prospect of dividends and their growth. The fourth one is the expansion of the two most prominent subsidies. The expansion of Peter Alexander and Smiggle is valued between $999 million and $1.59 billion. Uh, this significant expansion will contribute largely to the revenue of the company and is a very significant uh, value driver. The fifth one is the established and committed board members. Um, seven of the eight board members have been there for over a decade, um, and this indicates that they have strong ties to the company and very um, uh, low staff turnover in the executive roles. The red flag is the resignation of Richard Murray. As mentioned previously, he did resign, um, and this is a significant red flag because it may create a conflict of interest uh, for the new CEO, who is uh, an acting CEO and the current CFO in his work, and this may generate levels of inefficiency. The second one is a possible demerger of Peter Alexander and Smiggle. This is a significant red flag for the business as Peter Alexander and Smiggle contribute over 50% of the company's revenue. Um, a demerger would uh, generate a massive restructure in the business and significantly decrease the value of the stock. The earnings versus the market, the ASX earnings forecast is expected to grow by 11.2% per year. And PMB, PMB's earnings forecast is 19.1 over five years, indicating that its growth will not generally follow the um, the international market. Now for the value drops of KMD Brands. First is their global expansion plan. KMD Brands plans to relaunch their brands in Australia and New Zealand in 2024. They also have further plans for expansion in Europe in 2025. They've seen sales growth all across their regions across the world, and the new CEO Megan Welsh has experience in retail, wholesale, and digital sales industries. From this, we assume that KMD Brands will keep expanding to many regions using the same strategies to continue building their global brand. Secondly is their sustainability. Commercial brand-led circular business models, product take-back, renewal repair, free commerce or recycling aligns with the world's sustainability culture. From this, we assume KMD brands will achieve renewability goals and enable more government centres, as well as the ability to offload and sell carbon credits, which will allow them to outperform their competitors. Last is their digital transformation. Online penetration normalised through pandemic high to 30.2% of direct customer sales. From this, we can assume that there will be continued emphasis on e-commerce, given the significant increase in customers facing digital platforms in 2022, and the stable 13.2% share of the online sales. 
it's reasonable to assume that KMD brands will continue to prioritize commerce as a vital channel for their business. Now for the red flags of KMD brands. First is their profitability. KMD brands have seen a declining profitability over the last five years with a decrease in return on asset and a decrease in net profit margin. We can assume from this that the declining profitability ratios limits growth opportunities as it limits the company's ability to invest in growth initiatives. Secondly is their dividend policy. KMD brands current dividend yield is 7.32%. This dividend yield has been volatile over the past 10 years and the current earnings coverage is 121.5%. This suggests that dividend payments are not well covered by earnings. From this, we can assume that there's instability in the dividend policy and it may defer current stakeholders or potential stakeholders in the future. Last is their solvency. KMD Brand has seen an increase in solvency ratio over the past five years with an increasing debt to, race, um, debt to equity ratio and a decreasing time to interest earn ratio. This can become a problem in the near future if it's not controlled. Using the value drivers and red flags of premier investments, we've come up with three potential growth rate scenarios. The worst case is 12 point, negative 12.5%, so 30% probability. The base case is 8% with a 25% probability, and the best case is 12% at 45% probability. Next is KMD Brands. Uh, the worst case is negative 5% with a 30% probability. The base case is 7% with a 60% probability of occurring, and that's the most probable. And the best case is 10% with a 10% chance of occurring. For our active reference, we're going to be looking at primary investments. The best case scenario, short-term growth rate of 12% per annum. About the market, the domestic interest rate rise has slowed, and assuming that uh, from this fact, we assume the contraction rising interest rates is imminent and will continue. The delayed effects of COVID-19 supply chain implications will subside and domestic and international demographics will have a high disposable income. Uh, to expand on primary investment subsidy companies, and I infer from this that this will contribute to the best short-term growth rate of 12% per annum and we are 45% sure of this. About the company, financial health of business is very strong. The strong and consistent dividend yield have a payout ratio of 66.9% and primary investments have a levy beta of 0.96%. All of these facts um, have led us to these assumptions. The company will no longer go through the proposed merger and enable the increased revenue of both Peter Alexander and Smiggle's expansion to contribute to the existing revenue of the company. And this will um, significantly um, increase the value of the stock. Newly appointed CEO John Bryce will be supported by the board member. Six of the seven board members have been there for over a decade and have strong ties to the company. They will ensure that there's no lack of efficiency and help to reduce any conflict of interest. The debt to equity ratio will form a strong foundation for the expansion of Peter Alexander and Smigel. And the low beta and strong history of dividend yields will work to encourage existing um, investors to reinvest their dividends back into the company, further helping the expansion of Smigel and um, Peter Alexander, and will also encourage new investors to invest their capital into this. Based off of these facts and assumptions, I further premium investments is expected to grow um, in stock price by 12% per annum, and we are 45% confident of this. Now for the active inference of Kennedy Brands. We're using the base case scenario for short-term growth, which is 7% per year, and we have 60% sure this will happen. First, for global expansion, Kennedy Brands are expanding to Europe. From this, we assume they will keep expanding to many regions using the same strategy for continued success in their global brand. I infer this will contribute to the base case scenario of 7% annual growth. Now, about the company. Dividend yields have been volatile over the past 10 years. Their dividend yield is above the industry average. Their earning coverage is 121.5%. This suggests that dividend payments are not well covered by earnings. I assume that if the company continues paying dividends with a high yield, it may reduce the capacity to expand efficiently. Another fact is KMD brand subsidiary companies all adhere to strict climate neutral goals through various measures such as programs that focus on diversion from landfill and water restoration. From this, we assume that in the short term future, KMD brands will pursue carbon neutrality and this will enable the business to sell carbon credits, receive government incentives, enabling them to outperform competitors and adhere to all social options. I infer from all the facts and assumptions above that KMD brands are expected to grow its stock price by 7%, and we are 60% confident this will happen. From all of our research, we're now going to do the number crunching, which was done for calculating the discount rate and the growth rate. And those two um, rates were calculated using the short-term scenarios, growth rate, probability, and the percentile score of 0 0.2, which was given to you as we know you're a more conservative investor. 
So premium investments discount rate is 20.99 and the growth rate is 3.65. This gives us an intrinsic value of 26.82. KMD Brands has an intrinsic value of 340 using a discount rate of 13.42 and a growth rate of 4 using the same calculations as premium investments. Now comparing the intrinsic value to the share price today on uh, the 11th of October, Premier Investments has a share price of $24.08 compared to the intrinsic value of $26.82. The difference between those two values is 10.7. Whereas for Candy Burns, um, the price is 0 0.78 and the intrinsic value is $3.40. And the difference is 124.5%. Evidently, the Candy brand is much more in value and is therefore the better option to invest in. 